Hi everyone, my name is uh, Razvan and my talk is on uh, Unicraft, uh, an open source project. And my focus is on how we uh, bootstrapped uh, an online community around the project and how we breached uh, research, industry, academia, and open source. First of all, a bit on Unicraft. Unicraft is an open source project. Uh, it started as a research idea and it aims to create specialized and fast pieces of software by grouping together uh, components, mostly at operating system level, uh, to provide a unified uh, image that will run, that will then run uh, faster and in a, um, in a more secure manner than you would in your typical OS. Um, the way uh, Unicraft uh, works, you're, you can consider Unicraft basically a unikernel uh, SDK software development kit that tailors different OS components uh, into a given application that's uh, tailored, that's very narrow to its use. For example, if you just want to run a web server, you would only get those pieces of software, such, such as the networking stack, uh, if there's a database requirement, the uh, file system, only those bare minimal pieces of software, tie them together around the unikernel image, and then uh, be able to run that. That typically runs on top of a, uh, a hypervisor, such as Zen, uh, KVM, or, uh, or anything else. You may also run it uh, bare metal. Uh, it's an open source project. Uh, here on this slide, you can see the, uh, the main website and the, um, uh, the organization where all the uh, repositories for Unicraft are being kept. On that matter, uh, this is a screenshot of um, the Unicraft organization. Uh, you can see here the, the repositories, the number of people that are involved. Unicraft itself is the main repo. This is where all we call core components or internal libraries are kept. Uh, things that deal with time, with uh, threading, um, uh, networking, uh, the basic devices, interrupt management, platform code, architecture dependent uh, uh, parts are in Unicraft. The other, the other repositories are mostly uh, software components that are adapted. They, are not, they, they aren't implemented from zero. You basically take a soft, an existing software component and adapt it to be, uh, to be used, uh, used to be linked against Unicraft to create then a coherent image. For example, the app Hello World uh, application is just a simple application that's built on top of Unicraft. More complex applications such as, let's say, App Nginx uh, would use specific components from Nginx, some dependencies, some libraries such as the C library, uh, a networking stack to create once again this coherent, uh, unique, specialized uh, piece of software. Uh, all those items are mostly open source located under the, the Unicraft organization. Um, Unicraft has been started as a research project. This was uh, bootstrapped in the um, NEC uh, Laboratories Europe. And as time uh, went by, uh, different partners, both from academia and from, uh, from the industry joined in, uh, forming uh, what we now call the, uh, the overall Unicraft uh, community. Uh, this includes University of Bucharest, where I'm from, University of Lancaster, uh, KIT, Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, University of Manchester, University of Liège, these are universities, and from the industry, uh, we have ARM and Open Synergy. There are people from these, uh, from these organiza organizations that are actively involved in Unicraft, uh, each kind of catering to their specific needs, be it um, uh, industry projects, be it research projects, uh, startups or spin-offs, they are kind of, uh, everyone is uh, using Unicraft uh, for specific use case and are all part of the same uh, community. Uh, this is a timeline of how the project evolved. Uh, as you can see, it's a fairly young project. Uh, it, it's, it was started in 2015, 2016. This was the, the kickoff of the project uh, done as part of uh, any, uh, uh, NEC. Uh, and then with some support from, uh, from UPB, uh, it, uh, it got uh, its kind of first milestone. Uh, that was a paper presented to SOSP, a top uh, operating system conference in 2017. Then from that point on, things starting to progressively uh, get, get better and uh, the, the system itself and the community uh, got larger. 
we had the first bunch of students that were involved in the project uh, in 2018, and then this was kept going uh, in, the, in the next years. Uh, in 2019, uh, Unicraft uh, became the core of uh, the Unicore EU project, and partners uh, such as uh, NEC or uh, University of Liège and UPB are part of the Unicore project and are actively engaged in, in Unicraft. Unicraft is the technolog technological tool uh, in the Unicraft project. Then as time went by, there are several ideas. There, there are now startup um, uh, companies that are uh, uh, that have been created out of, out of Unicraft. Uh, earlier this year, the, as part of a paper uh, on uh, Unikernels uh, based on Unicraft, we were awarded the Eurosys Best Paper Award. Eurosys is once again a top operating system conference. And something uh, else uh, in uh, August this year, we organized Unicraft Summer of Code, also called U USOC. Uh, this was an uh, online workshop uh, targeted to students and hobbyists and professionals to get them more um, aware of Unikernels and uh, of Unicraft. This is kind of a timeline of uh, what's, uh, what's been happening with the project. The key item here, uh, that's the focus of this talk, is the student engagement. So starting from 2018, uh, students, bachelor students have been uh, actively engaged in the project. And my talk is going to focus on how we did this and how student engagement is, uh, is useful for an open source project. Uh, a using Unicraft as a um, um, as a model for that. So, yeah, to get any sort of project going, and this uh, will uh, include open source project, uh, we need the project ideas, uh, tasks, items that we want, goals that we want people to work on. We want the actual people, and we want to have some sort of financing for people to kind of keep their mind um, uh, on the project. Uh, for, for people, these, these were students. So uh, as I said in the, uh, earlier in the presentation, we are bridging academia, research, and industry. And each of these three items is kind of provided by one of these elements. For example, people are provided by academia, while projects and finance are provided uh, by research and industry. So students form the uh, kind of the core pe uh, people that are engaged in the community and research grants, research uh, ideas, industry, uh, industry ideas, industry funding provides the support for uh, students to work on uh, given projects and to have uh, funding available to, to keep them focused on, uh, on their work. Um, ideally, the cycle that you would want to get, and this is something we are working uh, towards and we are implementing in Unicraft, uh, is the following. A student starts working on, a, on, on your project. Uh, you get, it gets a project, it starts working on it. And when doing that, it, it gets a mentor. So uh, you, you need someone from the community with some experience to be able to provide you the details of what's going on, the objectives, and provide support and insights uh, when you will uh, well, you, you'll get stuck. Once this is uh, once this is done, the student is then actively engaged the community. There are the it exchanges messages, takes part in discussions, uh, gets to know more about the contributing guidelines, the reviewing guidelines. Uh, it starts to be uh, the, the student becomes a more active uh, member of the community. Then the, the in the ideal case in the ideal cycle, the graduate student now would become a contributor as, as part of the project. Um, this would mean that either it could it could uh, get to be uh, as a, a student or a PhD student getting some sort of funding and complement the research work uh, with some of the community work in the in the project, or be employed in a partner company. And because that company works with Unicraft or has interest in Unicraft being developed, uh, you will become a contributor there. As time goes by. Uh, this now graduate student, employee, PhD student uh, would become a mentor and that would close the loop and this mentor would then be able to get other students, get them to the loop and uh, kind of get this virtual, virtual cycle of getting more and more people engaged in the community. 
Uh, of course, this uh, this approach has its own challenges that we um, we hit uh, uh, as part of the Unicraft project. The I would say the prime one is the developer mentor time. Um, you need these people because they have good experience in the project. You want them to be able to provide uh, entry uh, entry students or first time contributors. Uh, information and support uh, on contributing. However, their time is limited. They usually have other uh, chores on their um, uh, on their hands, and it may be a bit difficult to properly uh, get them to 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 mentor the students. The other challenge is about student selection and engagement. There is a likelihood that you wouldn't get uh, students that are actively engaged. That there is maybe something that they don't like about the project. And uh, more, more than that, you want them to be actively engaged in the community. So not just work on that project, but kind of take part in discussions, uh, be able to provide feedback, do reviews, uh, turn them as much as possible into a role of contributor. The other item is the project difficulty. Uh, given the low level slash operating systems focus of Unicraft, there is a likelihood that the project difficulty can be too, too much. Even for students who are passionate about operating systems and low-level programming, the difficulty may be, may be a bit too much. So that's one of uh, that's definitely a challenge. And the other item is the integration of contributions. Uh, and this is something quite uh, difficult to tackle. Uh, as you get more students and more projects working, they will eventually end up in uh, creating a pull request in the repository that will then have to be reviewed and eventually um, eventually uh, merged, integrated into upstream. However, the number of students and projects usually surpasses the number of maintainers or reviewers that have the time to properly uh, to to get the, the to discuss with the with the student to properly uh, uh, update the, the contribution to the community guidelines. More more than that. Uh, the uh, the student that did the contribution may may no longer be interested. They may be going away, and that only makes it difficult for that contribution to be part of the upstream. Uh, so these are these are the challenges, and I'm going to switch to ways that we tackle them uh, in this kind of environment of engaging students and getting uh, getting contributions. For the developer uh, time, uh, we created we have a community channel. This is on Discord. And we have multiple mentors. So uh, the community, as it grows, it's assigned an, a number of mentors that can distribute their, let's say, support among students. Any sort of question that's raised can now be uh, can be answered by uh, by multiple mentors. For the selection process, we are looking for students based on our personal experience in the university where I'm at and the uh, other other people in the um, uh, in the community. We are teaching operating system classes, so we know the students. We know what they are, what they what they can do. There is, there are also great. There are questions they raise, so we kind of have a personal experience with them and be able to do this uh, selection based on their interest and passion for the operating system topics that are so so important for Unicraft. For the project difficulty, what we usually do is that any student that's going to be involved in the project will get, uh, let's say, several weeks project just to get accustomed to the to the, to Unicraft, uh, to get a taste of things, getting used to the contributor model, to the source code, the way things are happening, the community, the resources. Once this is done and the student uh, is now accommodated to the project, uh, you want to do um, uh, a listing of the availability, project availability and let student, students uh, list their preference in the project. This has worked very well. We have uh, usually uh, a, a number of projects a bit uh, a bit larger than the number of students. We uh, we let them state their preference and then uh, we then we then distribute the project according to the preference. And this this has worked quite well. Uh, all the students that were part of this project were very excited and enjoyed uh, enjoyed the work. On the part of uh, contribution to contributor integration, this is a uh, something we are currently doing as part of the new governance model in uh, Unicraft. We are using a decentralized maintainer role. This is also based on code owners feature in, uh, in GitHub that allows 
teams of maintainers to be automatically assigned to PRs or issues for, for particular repositories or, or subtrees uh, of, the, of the repository. This is still ongoing. Uh, I would say that uh, there are quite a number of contributions and pull requests that need to be integrated. Um, our hope and our aim is that by using the decentralized maintainer role, we'll be able to uh, speed up the process of reviewing and integrating contributions from students and uh, uh, the larger community. Things that we found working as part of our experience with engaging with building the community uh, what are those listed here? Uh, for once, uh, we are using, we, we do a, a weekly community meeting. This is done on Discord, our online community channel, and uh, it's advertised publicly. We are now working towards a more public way of keeping a meeting summary. Until now, we, we were keeping some sort of internal meeting summary. We are now working towards an item of keeping public meeting summaries. This is what's going on. This is very useful both for connecting people in the community and for um, getting to know what everyone is doing and getting to raise any sort of issues or urgent matters as part of a live discussion. Uh, this takes place one hour each week and uh, it's very useful um, for the for the project community. Uh, irrespective of the meeting taking place, the Discord the server is very useful. They have, there are multiple channels on different topics and given the way Unicraft works with multiple components, you have different channels, each channel dedicated to a particular topic. That may be a programming language, Rust, uh, uh, Go, D. Uh, there may be a, something related to a, an application, Redis, uh, Nginx, or a given platform, KVM, or Zen. Some other items that worked were uh, is per topic calls. Uh, for example, we are now working towards uh, using uh, integrating ID VS Code uh, with Unicraft. Uh, you have a call for that, integrating Kubernetes, you have a call for that, you want to uh, do some sort of syscall support where we want, we have dedicated calls. We also have dedicated calls with our industry partners, for example, there's uh, a monthly call with um, uh, with uh, uh, Open Synergy, a monthly call with ARM, there's an, uh, actually now on, uh, a monthly call with uh, Linux Foundation. Uh, to kind of keep things rolling, to get input from, uh, from partners to see uh, how what how what, what we can do to to improve the project and uh, uh, marketing market it accordingly. Something that was very useful for engaging the community uh, uh, was the community event uh, Unicraft Summer of Code taking place in August uh, this year. Uh, I wouldn't say this is the only way to engage the community, but uh, it proved very successful. We, we had an intensive. 10 days workshop, four hours per day. So that's a, that was a total of 40, 40 hours and an eight hours hackathon. And a large part of the community, of the student community was engaged that I would say about 15 to 20 people were involved in the, in the event. Uh, and apart from the output of getting very good documentation uh, for, the, for the project, and now people can do, can work the tutorials, through the video recordings, it provided, um, a very good ground for people to work together to uh, lay out their ideas to to see what uh, what everyone can bring to the table. So community events are very useful. They are they they work towards getting the community um, working better together. Um, some lessons learned, or they, this was initially something I saw things that don't work as expected, but I I renamed it to lessons learned. Um, one of the most uh, problematic uh, e uh, things is, as expected, once you have a research task at hand or an industry task, there's some priority to it. The open source tasks uh, tend to tend to fall in the priority queue. So that means that if there's some sort of contribution, some sort of, re of review that you are doing, that will always kind of come out last. This is also for me when I have some sort of project to work or some some class to teach any sort of tasks I'm uh, uh, I'm dealing with Unicraft is uh, is kind of left uh, uh, left behind this is a uh, kind of something we don't have a very good solution to we want to make the most of it by decentralizing roles it's a, a kind of an I would say an obvious uh, an obvious conclusion the other item is uh, we are fairly 
um, exigent, I would say, about the, the quality uh, of PRs. And that means we want to get them to the best shape before being integrated, but that also causes delays. So uh, one, uh, if you want to integrate something, it has to go through a, a bunch of phases, being sure everything works properly. Is that the best design? Uh, and although that's kind of very well with respect to what you want the project to be, to be, to be robust and to work every time, it delays integration and it may cause a bit of frustration. How long is it going to take before this uh, contribution is going to be uh, integrated? Uh, another item we are using uh, a lot of automation, integration of CICD systems, uh, assignment and the others. Uh, this is very useful, but it has to work. If, it's, if it doesn't work, uh, it may cause delays because you, you can't do it manually. It, you may break things. And if you want to do that part, you still have to wait for the automated infrastructure to work. And that uh, may take some time if it's not properly configured or if uh, it's, uh, it's not yet uh, uh, in its uh, final form. Um, and uh, given that students are kind of continue, continuously onboarded, opening new projects will always will add kind of an unfinished project. So it's kind of piling up. Once you get a project uh, done, it usually takes a bit of time to get it upstream. And if in, in that time you start a new project with a new student or the student that did this project starts a new project, then that only adds new unfinished projects. And it also, um, uh, messes up with this kind of integration work. It takes a bit of time to do the, uh, to have the integration done into upstream. Um, as some, as numbers of the, of our approach with using, with engaging students in the, in the community, this, uh, this is a summary of uh, what's been happening, uh, I would say since 2018, so for the past three, four years in the project. So uh, three initial students that, were let's let's say growing in the community are now PhD students and are mentors in the community, so they are valuable members, maintainers with a lot of experience and they uh, uh, help uh, throughout the, uh, the community projects. Uh, six students that have been growing in the project are now employed in related companies and are active contributors. Three students, once again, growing the project are now active contributors, so they are they are they take part in meetings. They they have ownership on projects. Ideally, in, uh, uh, in some time, they would become uh, mentors. Uh, we usually have a fresh batch of five, seven students per year uh, working in, uh, in projects. And ideally, they would fall into that cycle of uh, getting a project, working on it, engaging the community, then becoming a contributor, and eventually becoming a mentor. And um, as part of the Unicross Summer of Code, this wasn't the uh, one outcome we expected. We were basically focused on uh, um, raising the awareness about the project and uh, getting people to know more about Unicronals and documenting uh, Unicraft and the way Unicronals work. But three students participating in Unicross Summer of Code are now uh, working on projects and are looking on projects on Unicraft. So they are kind of going in, inside that uh, initial cycle of students uh, working in um, a Unicraft community project. Um, some takeaways from our uh, experience in Unicraft is that students, university students are available and they do good work on open source projects. So I would uh, recommend any sort of open source project to, uh, to look into that. Uh, in my university, apart from Unicraft, there, is, uh, there are also two other communities there's a free BSD community and there's a D language community that follow a similar, uh, a similar model of getting students, uh, mentoring them, and then aiming to, to turn them into active contributors as part of the communities. And things have been uh, going quite well on, uh, on those uh, communities as well. Mentorship is required. So that means you, you do need uh, people who are experienced, who have time and who enjoy uh, showing others, discussing these items, helping others throughout the project. Uh, it helps, and I think it's uh, it's very important to have this cycle in mind. Our cycle is student contributor mentor. This is what we are aiming for. Uh, it's a fairly young project. As I said, it only started more actively in 2017, 2018. 
But going further, this is what we're, what we're aiming for. Uh, based on our already very good relationships in different universities, we want to get students from, from those universities, get them into the cycle and kind of increase the, their engagement in the community and the number of mentors, active contributors of, in the community. And as I mentioned earlier, personal relationships matter. So the, the basis of the selection is uh, mostly for people in the universities, their past experience and uh, relationship with students, they know what, uh, what they can do, uh, part of the uh, lecture discussions, lab activities, assignments, grading, you, that, that gives you a very good personal connection uh, to select students to be part of, uh, uh, of the community. Uh, that being said, um, I want to thank you for uh, uh, listening to this talk. Uh, as a summary, uh, this was a talk about the Unicraft project, a fairly young open source project um, that has been using uh, academia, industry, and research to create a community uh, around uh, this project, this unikernel uh, SDK. And we are working, uh, we are using any the, the, experience, the experience we had so far and um, experience of the other open source communities to enlarge the community, to get as many people involved into that. Um, and yeah, get, as get, uh, get uh, knowledge and skills in uh, operating systems. These three links in, the, in this slide are pointing to the, our Discord server where most of the discussion take place, uh, the main uh, community website and the Unicraft uh, uh, GitHub organization, where all the repositories are located and where all our contributions um, happen. Uh, I kindly invite you to, to go into these links and uh, hopefully become a, a contributor or advertise uh, this project into universities and uh, uh, follow the student contributors uh, mentor cycle uh, I just talked about. Thank you so much.